vacation. It's a time to get away from everything and enjoy some time away, but I'm not taking time away from buying some comic books. Let's take a look at what I picked up on vacation next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hey there, comic book community. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. Before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. Helps the algorithm, um, helps the channel. You can also follow us on other social medias, Instagram, Bronzeville underscore comics on whatnot, Bronzeville underscore comics. We do whatnot sales every Monday night, 10 p.m. Eastern time. And also uh, my eBay store, the description is, the link is in the description below. So I went away on vacation, and um, as I did last year, I found some antique stores, antique malls, that had some comic books. Not as good a haul as last year. Just to, to get started with that, um, a lot of the same books that uh, I saw there last year were still there because that's what you have. Um, and it ran the gamut. Basically, most of these places... Uh, had books that were on consignment. So sometimes you'll find something that's popped recently uh, that has some news attached to it that is worth more than it was several months ago, and the people who can sign it aren't really on top of their um, their game. They're, they're not following the market like other collectors are, so they're not going in and repricing their stuff. Uh, that being said, I picked up a few things. So one of the stores I went to, I just picked up a handful of things, um, this Fury of Firestorm book, this is the first appearance of Firehawk, who is a romantic, ram, romantic interest slash kind of sidekick. Picked up a nice George Perez Wonder Woman there, number 13 in that run. I picked up this um, pretty cool bronze horror book, The uh, Monster of Frankenstein, number 11. This is a book that is very hard to, uh, is often mistitled. Um, but uh, classic Marvel horror. Other, outside of uh, Tomb of Dracula and Werewolf by Night, Frankenstein and The Living Mummy have kind of gotten lost in the sands of time. This book is a lower grade book, but it is Action Comics 300, which is a um, anniversary issue. There is some damage there on the spine on the top half of the book, and there is some rust on the staples some creasing, but I thought it was only 10 bucks for a book that old. And the book that I really um, kind of liked picking up, I've been looking, I've been picking this book up whenever I see it for the right price, and that is Zatanna Special, a one shot from 1987. Classic Gray Morrow cover, who also did the cover of uh, DC Superstars 11. Uh, back there, her first cover appearance. Um, and he was kind of connected to some of her stories in the uh, 70s and 80s. Uh, I think Zatanna is a really interesting character to look at in terms of DC. I think they will eventually develop something with her. I also took a trip to DC Toys and Collectibles, uh, which um, they had a whole bunch of different stuff in there. They had sports cards, they had records, a fairly new store, and they had comic books on consignment. Another book that I can't pass up, Infinite Crisis 3, the first appearance of Jaime Reyes before he becomes the third Blue Beetle. Um, that is a... Uh, I'm still speculating on this book. Hopefully DC won't mess up that movie um, that is uh, already being shot. That doesn't mean anything to Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, Zola Madriera from Cobra Kai is playing the title role and it's survived so far. So hopefully we'll, we'll see that on the big screen. The difference between the Batgirl movie, remember, was an HBO Max. So there was nothing they could really monetize from that in terms of ticket sales. It was, you know, I guess a business decision. They could write off the $90 million. They weren't going to make more than $90 million from that film because they weren't going to get that many more subscriptions to HBO Max. Anyway, I picked up this $20.99 Unlimited, number nine, which is this uh, really cool Joe Kubert cover very late in his career and uh, kind of an interesting choice for him. 
picked up this. This is not the first issue of the run, but it is uh, the title uh, Daredevil Born Again, which is the title of that Daredevil Disney Plus series that's coming out. Um, it will not very unlikely be an adaptation of the storyline, but we'll probably take elements from it. Um, this I've been picking up Swordmaster, Swordmaster number one. Um, that's at the right price there. And I also picked up Dark Hawk number two. If we ever see Dark Hawk, this is his second appearance, and it's a newsstand. Um, and then most of the other stuff I just picked up going to different uh, antique places. Warlock and the Infinity Watch number three. Legends number two. This is an underappreciated book, I think. Um, Justice League of America Annual number two. First appearance of both uh, of the new Justice League Detroit, which everybody hated. But it's also the first appearance of both Vibe and Gypsy. Of course, Vibe was a character that um, was very much a part of the Flash TV series for many seasons. And kind of the quality of the show has gone down since he left the show. And then Gypsy was on that show as well. I grabbed this. Um, it is kind of a little bit lower grade. Oh, look at that mess in the back. But this is a 1972 book, which I've been collecting. Our Fighting Forces, number 138. This, a pretty cool um, bronze book strange tales 179 um a warlock book can't pass up bronze age batman 302 this is the first appearance of lucius fox um who does play a prominent role in the batman mythos going forward in that played by morgan freeman in the christopher nolan trilogy um defenders number 17 this is the first cameo appearance of the wrecking crew their first full appearance is the next issue uh, this book also had taken off a few years ago because it's the first time that we see Luke Cage with the Defenders, and obviously he was part of that Defenders team in the Netflix series. Um, this is another 1972 book, Star Spangled War Stories, number 162, a 25 center. Uh, also a Joe Kubert cover, which he was known for. DC Comics Presents, number one. Um, another Flash Superman race. Uh... A, an early there is a little bit of damage up in the the corner box there but Conan and the Barbarian number three his third appearance a magazine um this is Savage Order Conan number five a classic cover and this I found a bunch of these and then let me just resort re re them um there were a bunch of these, and it's interesting how this character has kind of um, popped. It stayed popular. This is from the um, Archie Adventure series, Sonic the Hedgehog, number three, uh, number four. Didn't have numbers one or two, which would have been nice to have. Five. What do we have? Nine. 10 and 12 and what's interesting is all of these are newsstands except for number 12 number 12 is not the others are all newsstands another newsstand um betty and veronica number 69 with a uh, was it dan de carlo cover this uh also a newsstand bartman number one one of those bongo comics um simpsons adaptations i found this this book is cooled down considerably since it first came out and it's kind of indicative of those variant covers that are hot for the moment but don't really hold their value a lot of people got this book slabbed but i thought the price was right even given what it was this is the second printing of amazing spider-man number 55 and it has that um oh i'm trying to think of the name of the artist uh, gleason gleason cover patrick gleason cover um I also picked up this. I don't think I have this. A Superman 100 pager. Number 284. I picked up this Our Army at War. Um, 100 pager, 269. A couple bucks. Can't pass up a 100 pager for that. And then kind of the three most interesting books I got. This is a little bit lower grade. Um, but this is a book I had kind of low-key been looking for. And that is Showcase number 80 which is the first Silver Age appearance of the Phantom Stranger. And the Phantom Stranger is a character we have seen on screen. 
Um, I don't think they, they fully utilized him in the Swamp Thing series. Um, but if they are going to do a Justice League Dark property, and there's been talk about that for years, if that does ever come to fruition, uh, Phantom Stranger is going to be part of that. His first appearance was in the Golden Age in his own um, series, I think in 1952. And then his first Silver Age appearance in the showcase before he got his own title that ran um, through much of the 70s. I also picked up this. I thought this was an interesting comic. And that is Archie's Rival Reggie number three. Um, with, you know, this this classic look of the uh, the characters, uh, Veronica, Archie, and Reggie. Um, and it is a little bit rough shape, but I think the spine roll, maybe some of the staining can be... Uh, Reduced, you know, it's complete. It's it's pretty still pretty strong at the staples um, So that was an interesting pickup and then this um, Was a book. I was actually surprised it was there because There was a collection of books of like three short boxes in a case and um, I Went by and then I was gonna go ask to take it out and somebody else to take it out and there's younger kid and he was looking through it and maybe pulled a couple books the books were generally um, not favorably priced, um, let's put it that way, but I felt that, um, there was some stuff in there. I think I looked through it last year and I don't know if the, um, person who consigns the books there it rotates the stock at all. Um, but I went through and I found some stuff and it was funny. The, the young kid goes, looks at me, goes, you know, uh, if you really want the stuff, you got to look for the Superman and Batman stuff. I'm like, thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, but what I found there, and I'm real happy with this pickup. I don't know if I'm, I think it's probably stay in the PC. Doom Patrol 86. Okay, this is the first issue of Doom Patrol. They premiered in My Greatest Adventure number 80. Um, and then after 85 of My Greatest Adventure, the title uh, was retitled The Doom Patrol. Um, it's not a bad, in bad shape. It's good, solid mid-grade. There's, I'm not sure what this black stuff on the, the top is. There's a little bit of a tape pull above the L there. But this is also the first appearance of Monsieur Mala, the brain, and um, the Brotherhood of Evil um, as a whole, including, um, what's uh, the character's name? Um, Madame Mask. Um, put it in the comments if I misremembered that. But uh, this is still when they had their green costumes. Uh, that's... This was a really uh, nice pickup, I thought. So um, I'm going to clean that up as best I can and see. Um, probably probably keep it in the personal collection. It is a pretty solid copy, though. Um, definitely, you know, mid-grade at best. But, um, you know, a lot of stuff you see, the, especially the older stuff that's kind of been flipped through for years, is tends to be in lower grade. So I was happy with that particular book. So let me know what you think about those pickups. What do you think is the most interesting book there? Um, and, you know, are you finding sometimes books harder to find? You know, these kinds of places, if they don't replenish their stock, it just gets picked over and picked over and picked over. For instance, you go and you find Omega Men numbers two, four, six. You know, all the big issues are gone, and then the stuff is not anywhere near the order that it originally was. It was this, that, that stuff that was missing all the key issues last year, it was a little bit better order now the order's all mixed up um and some of the uh you know it does it seems like there was less stock than there was a year ago overall so um let me know what you think of the pickups um and you can take a look at a couple of my other videos here and this is jim saying until next time enjoy your comics